Hi everybody, this is Prashant Kadur. I'm the software lead for Enterprise Mobile Computing Division. I'm responsible for developing uh, tools, APIs, SDKs, solutions, and applications as well. Today, we are gonna be talking about what's new in DataVedge. DataVedge is a very popular tool. I'm pretty sure you are all familiar with DataVedge, you have used it. I will give a quick uh, introduction to DataVedge, but let's look at the agenda now. <clears throat> we'll talk about, first I'll introduce to development options and then a quick introduction to DataVedge. And then I'll take you through some of the latest that's happening now or that's coming very soon. And then we will talk about deprecation. And then I will get into some of the new uh, features that we recently introduced in DataVedge and some of the important features as well that we, pretty much everybody commonly uses. I will get into those features as well. Moving on. So development options. Um, we offer a wide range of development options for your applications. You can use enterprise browser for uh, HTML5 cross-platform development for those who want to use HTML file and browser development. And then you have data edge where coding is minimum. It is UI-based configuration. You use intent to communicate with data edge, but the idea is to reduce the number of lines of code. And then you have traditional EMDK for Android where you would use Android Java for development and device management. And then you have uh, EMDK for Xamarin. Those who want to use C Sharp, they, they can use EMDK for Xamarin, which provides all the features that EMDK for Android provides. And you get to use Visual Studio Development for .NET. For more information, you can get to our techtalks.zebra.com. So if you are thinking, if you are new to this, and if you are thinking, OK, what's the difference? You talked about these four different options. Let me quickly go through uh, what it means, the environment and then the programming language that you use. For example, for Data Wedge, uh, assuming you are developing uh, Android applications, you could use Android Studio. But if you are using Xamarin, you could use Visual Studio because Data Wedge deals with intent APIs. It does not have its own SDK. And Enterprise Browser, it's a browser-based browser environment. You can use any browser uh, HTML5 editor for this purpose. And then and EMDK for Android, uh, it uses Android Studio. And EMDK for uh, Xamarin, Visual Studio can be used. For programming language, you have Android Java, C Sharp, Intent for Data Wedge. Enterprise browser is HTML5 slash JavaScript. Uh, EB gives APIs through JavaScripts. And then you can, you can call those JavaScript APIs in your HTML code. Yeah, obviously EMDK for Android uses Java, EMDK Xamarin uses C Sharp. All of these come with sample apps and documentation and uh, the browser-based HTML5 is the only cross-platform uh, tool that you can use for development. Pretty much all of them have UI-based configuration tool on PC except DataVedge because DataVedge is an intent-based uh, interface, uh, you don't need a UI-based configuration. Barcode scanning can be done using any of these tools. RFID is limited to Data Wedge and Enterprise Browser. Uh, however, RFID SDK exists on its own independent of EMDK. So you can use it in your Android Studio. Device configuration, if your goal is to configure the device, secure the device, manage the device in your application instead of an EMM, Enterprise uh, Browser EMDK for Xamarin, EMDK for Android provides mechanism to do that. Quick introduction to Data Wedge. Data Wedge is a service running in the background and it helps you with data capture. You are you configure Data Wedge to tell it what application that you want Data Wedge support for and what screen that you want Data Wedge support for. And then you create a profile. In that profile, you define if you want to process the data before it's sent to your application. 
you will also define if uh, how the data is sent to your application through keyboard mechanism or through an intent broadcast. Keyboard mechanism is the easiest one where you don't have to write any code. Data Wedge will put the, the data into the keyboard queue and your application will receive the data as if someone is typing it. But if you are using intent, uh, you do have complete control over the data. You get the data in your intent API, just like any other API. You process it however you want, and you can choose to put the data on the screen or not to put the data on the screen. So the intent gives you complete control over it. Intent also gives you another interface. It passes the data to your application, but it also gives you an API set that means you get to control data wedge completely as if it's an API interface, a traditional API interface. With the name value pair, you get to control when the profile is enabled, when data wedge is enabled, how the profile is uh, modified at the real time, and uh, you can even change how the data is delivered real time in your, in your application. So data wedge gives you complete API interface for uh, data capture purposes. And um, <clears throat> I already talked about the data wedge. Uh, if you are using keystrokes, there is very little code that you need to write in your application. You just have to say what your profile looks like. Data wedge will keep an eye on who is in the foreground. If your application comes to the foreground, if your screen, a particular screen that you have defined in the profile, comes to the foreground, it applies it. If you want to do scan, if you want to enable code 39, if you want to disable code 128, or feedback, you want to modify feedback, you can do all of that ahead of time, put it in the profile, and then data wedge will take care of it. When the application comes to the foreground, it enables the barcode scanner, configures the scanners the way you want it, captures the data, processes the data, and then it passes the data back to you. But it doesn't always um, good or enough for uh, several applications and use cases where they do want to process the data uh, themselves instead of data which putting it into the keyboard queue. That's why we have the, the broadcast, intent broadcast API where the data is passed to your application. That's the second one where it says minimal code. So having introduced Data Wedge to you, now I'm going to talk about Data Wedge versus EMDK for Android or Xamarin for that purpose. There are a, a, a number of people who would say, I want to do barcode scanning and I want to use EMDK. I don't like Data Wedge. I don't like Intent because that is not, uh, that is a pre-configured profile and I want to com complete control over the scanning when and how uh, it's done. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Data Wedge provides intent APIs for programmatically controlling scanning real time. So that means you have intent APIs, you can control everything through programmatically. So EMDK provides the same feature, but Data Wedge also provides the same feature. EMDK Intent APIs provides the same level of feature set as EMDK. Whatever you can do in EMDK, you can do in Data Wedge. Same use cases. So there really is no better in terms of feature set between EMDK and Data Wedge. On top of that, you, Data Wedge has several benefits over EMDK. That means you are creating a profile, and if you want to modify a profile, you can do that anytime and push the profiles through your EMM or uh, yourself, and then change the behavior of Data Wedge without having to rewrite your applications. That is the biggest benefit Data Wedge brings. If you are using EMDK, you want to modify a single setting, single configuration, then you have to go change your application, modify it, uh, test it, and then push it down to your devices, which is a lot more work, a lot more testing, and more complicated. EMDK enabling scanning requires about 20 lines of code, maybe even more depending on what you're doing. Whereas Data Wedge, it's more, not more than two to three lines of code, 
if you choose to use intent APIs, if you choose to use Q, uh, uh, keyboard cues, then you don't change anything in your application. So for that reason, we strongly recommend using data wedge intent APIs. New features in the, in the future, uh, our goal is to bring it in data wedge first and then decide if you want to bring it in EMDK or not. Okay, so that's data wedge and EMDK. Now coming to data capture and data wedge, what's available, I'll quickly go through some of this. Uh, one is MDNA OCR. We are bringing back OCR and data wedge. And uh, uh, I will talk some of the use cases we will be providing in the next slides. And the next one is barcode highlighting, where you get to say, when you are scanning multiple barcodes or you're not sure what barcode is really what you're looking for, we are bringing AR code to you and that will help you with, with your pick list. And then the, uh, the next one after that is image capture with either imager or scanner uh, with the viewfinder. Uh, the, uh, uh, you could do that in camera today, but the ask or uh, from, the, from the customers is to be able to do that using an imager that we are bringing it in. <clears throat> so let's talk about MDNA, OCR. MDNA is the uh, Zebra mob Mobility DNA uh, th that contains a number of value, uh, value adds and that includes data wedge also. Uh, OCR is the one that's gonna come out pretty soon in the next uh, few weeks, uh, maybe a uh, couple of months you will start seeing some of the OCR features being released. And uh, the first thing is to notice is we are introducing a new feature called workflow input, or it's an input plugin, just like barcode input, you will see a workflow input. We may change the word workflow depending on a few things, um, but you will see a new input. And the new input will enable, uh, enable you to do the OCR that I just mentioned. Some of the OCRs you will be able to do is scanning the container IDs, uh, identification documentation, such as driver's license, vehicle license plates, tire identification numbers, and vehicle identification numbers. That's the WIN number that's etched on, on the windshield. Uh, please note that OCR features are licensed. You need to buy licenses uh, for, for using these OCR. We will provide more information in the next few weeks on the, on the licensing features, as well as how to buy them and how to use them. You will see on the right some pictures of the data wedge uh, profile where uh, licensing, uh, sorry, uh, the OCR uh, features are available. In this example, ID documentation is selected. <clears throat> And here, here are some of the screens uh, that you will see. Uh, uh, on the container ID, you will see that uh, the ID uh, is, is marked in green. That means the data wedge is ready to pick that up and then pass that information. So in your application, a viewfinder comes up and then when you hold the, the container ID in the, in the viewfinder, um, the OCR, data wedge OCR recognizes that and then it uh, puts a, uh, uh, it highlights the, the, the ID. And then once it's complete uh, picking up, it passes the data and the image back to your application. In the one that's the, the picture in the bottom, you will see that the picture is there, the one that it captured from, and the result, that is the uh, data that it captured, and then the length of the string that it captured. The same on the ID documentation. You see the ID, it's picking up the ID image and passing it to the, uh, the application below. In addition to that, it's also passing last name, date of birth, first name, and documentation number. And as far as what licenses, what IDs uh, are supported, we will provide that information in the next few weeks also. License plate. Uh, this is another one. We will provide information on what kind of license plates and what country, what states, what provinces. We will give that information in the next few weeks. Uh, here it's picking up a license plate in the US and it's passing the image with the license plate number and the string length. And then moving on to the meter reading, you see the uh, it's picking up a, 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 
uh, at the meter reading, and then it's passing the, the, the text as well as the string plan in the bottom. The next one is the tire identification number. <clears throat> uh, it's, uh, it's identifying the, uh, the tire ID here in this picture, and it is highlighting it with green. Uh, that's to show what it's going to uh, 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 translate. And then it passes your, uh, that information back to application. I don't have a picture for that. And uh, vehicle identification number, as you can see here, it's picking up the win number and then passing the, the, the result back to the application. And then the next one is barcode highlighting. Barcode highlighting is, the, it uses the AR core. Basically, when you have multiple um, barcodes in the field of vision, it will highlight the barcodes and then it may even do more than that. I'm gonna explain it very quickly in the next one or two slides. It uses augment, augmented reality to identify barcode and highlighting it. You can use camera or imager. Barcodes in the field of view will get highlighted as specified in the highlighted rules. So what I mean by that is how it is highlighted, whether it is highlighted, and what kind of highlighting is done is completely controlled by you. <clears throat> For example, you can say, I only want to highlight if the barcode is six characters or higher. That's the length of the barcode, right? You get to say what the length is. And you can say what the text in the barcode, if it exists, then highlight the barcode. Or you can go with symbology. You can say, I'm interested in code 128, only pick, not only do you pick the code 128, I want you to highlight it with green. Oh, by the way, I want you to highlight the ones that I don't want with yellow or red or some other uh, mechanism, some other color as well. <clears throat> and on the, on the right-hand side, you see screens where to enable it and how to set these rules and then uh, the, the way to pick the color. And the, the one in the bottom left is the result of that. You're using it in your application, the viewfinder comes up, it recognizes the barcodes, and then it's putting that overlay or, uh, or the highlighting uh, using AR core is happening. And it, it sends the results back. And in this case, even though I am highlighting all of them, I am accepting all those barcodes. That's why I, uh, it, it depends on your use case how and why you want to highlight something in different colors. <clears throat> and uh, here is a code snippet on how to write applications <clears throat> to use uh, highlighting. It, it could be done in the profile ahead of time um, and then uh, invoked when you need it, or you can do it all in your intent APIs and don't need, uh, uh, if you need to, if you decide to do it programmatically entirely. In this code snippet, you can see that <clears throat> we are creating an intent here and then adding some of the actions here. And one of the parameters uh, we are adding here is we want to use internal imager. And then we are coming to creating a rule. In this rule, we are saying we are interested in code 128. And then if you see code 128, fill it up or highlight it with this color. And then I also go back and then say, I want to create a rule number two which uses code 39 and with a different color. And I create all of them. I push them to the uh, data wedge and that is the barcode overlay parameter. That's what you're doing. And you push it to the data wedge and data wedge applies the settings in the real time. <clears throat> we will provide sample applications when this is released in the next few weeks to months. Uh, and you will be able to use a working sample to see the code as well as how it functions. <clears throat> um, next is image capture with uh, using the integrated imager. Uh, like I said before, you can capture an image now with either imager or camera, and you will have um, uh, you will have a viewfinder available. And in the in the field of view, if there is a barcode data, you can choose to uh, decode that barcode data as well uh, when it's capturing the image. And on top of that, 
you do get to say you want to highlight the barcode with the AR code that I talked about just now, uh, in addition to capturing the image, decoding the barcode, and using the AR code. That's also coming very soon. Uh, all these three new features that I mentioned, they're all going to come together in a single update in the next few to few weeks, maybe one or two months. <clears throat> um, very quickly, uh, a quick demo video of the um, capturing of the image. Um, and I will explain it. So we are opening the data wedge and then opening a profile. This is already created. And I am going to go to workflow input. I'm enabling it. And I am going to freeform image capture. And I'm configuring it by clicking on the dot, dot, dot. I get to pick several options here, but I am using uh, decode and highlight barcodes options. And if I want feedback, you can click on that feedback and then choose one of the available feedback options. Now that I configured the profile, I'm opening up my application and now data widget is ready. You don't need to do anything in your application other than enabling the profile. It captured the, the picture, it decoded it and sent the data back. And you were also able to see highlighting of the barcode using AR code in the background. That's the video demo. And as I said, you will see uh, working sample applications as well as code snippets in addition to the documentation in Tech Docs. So let's start with some of the things we are deprecating and why we are deprecating. <clears throat> uh, voice input options. We currently have uh, a start phrase where you can configure uh, data wedge voice input option. This is a new feature, fairly new, but it's been there for a few, uh, for a while now. Some of you may know it, some of you may not, but we do have option to input data using voice. And how you prepare voice to talk, start collecting data is what I'm talking about. Uh, we have currently, it sits and waits, and then you can define a start phrase your, your start phrase can be hello zebra. And then when you say hello zebra, it will start collecting data. And then once it times out, or once you stop talking, it sends the data back to your application. However, um, we are deprecating this uh, waiting, uh, a, waiting for a start, start phrase to occur. Uh, we are deprecating it for two reasons. One is it's sitting and waiting uh, that is consuming battery. And also we see that because, um, uh, because very few people really use the start phrase because of the background noise and other reasons, they do not want to use the start phrase to start the voice input. Instead, they want to press a button such as PTT button to start the voice trigger uh, uh, option. So that's why we are deprecating it. Uh, and uh, we, we suggest stop using it and start using PTT button to trigger the voice capture. And the next deprecation is, um, is uh, data wedge reporting. Very few people uh, even know that it exists. Data wedge, you, uh, you can enable the data wedge reporting when you import uh, profiles, it spits out a report saying, the, uh, just describing the, the issues that it had with importing uh, the features, uh, sorry, the profiles that you have uh, tried to import. Uh, the reason we are uh, deprecating this is we now know how to um, support almost all features on all devices. So there is really very few things that can really go wrong. And that's one of the reasons we are deprecating the reporting option. And uh, there are other ways uh, of uh, uh, finding out what went wrong when you try to import it. Uh, I, we, will, we do have some kind of documentation. Uh, we will pass that information in tech talk on how to do it, but we really see, don't see a reason for you to be using this feature anymore because we have brought that consistency across all devices and platforms. The next new feature is simultaneous use of multiple scanners. The use case being, I scan 
barcodes that are close to me, two to three feet, four feet, five feet. And then I use another Bluetooth scanner, for example, to scan a barcode that's a little far, far from me, 10 feet, eight feet, maybe even more, because many of these uh, Bluetooth scanners uh, um, lets you scan uh, the barcodes that are far from you. So that is the use case today. In order to do that, you have to stop using the built-in uh, scanner for scanning the close by barcodes, and then you need to switch it uh, to the Bluetooth scanner, and then you switch back uh, once you are done using the Bluetooth scanner. That takes time, it's not very efficient, it's not very productive. For that reason, what we have done is we let you enable either uh, a, a built-in imager or a Bluetooth scanner or a combination of these. You can use camera or imager for internally built-in scanners, or you can use one of the, uh, the supported scanners, Bluetooth scanners, and you can, you can use either of those uh, uh, scanner sources to scan data and get data uh, acquired in your application. And by the way, in your profile, you can configure the built-in imager or scanner differently from the Bluetooth scanner because what you want to scan might be different uh, uh, between those two scanners. You can use Data Wedge Intent uh, also. Like I said, Data Wedge Intent API supports everything that you can do programmatically uh, as well as manually. Security. Some of the things we have brought in recently is the security uh, options that we have built in. Uh, so data wedge intents, intents in general are not completely secure. It could be misused. So for that reason, what we have done is we have put controls over data wedge intents. Those controls are not, <clears throat> are not done by developers. Those are done by admins. So we do provide stage now, we do provide options for EMMs to configure these options control over data wedge intents as to who uses them and how how we use how to use them so basically what you can do is you can use your emm or stage now to tell data wedge do not automatically import configuration files today if you don't do anything if you don't disable this you can drop a configuration file and change the behavior of data wedge completely because that file that you put in in data wedge folder can be automatically imported and acted upon. That could be a security gap and you can disable it. And also you can disable importing of configuration files through intents. You can disable settings changed by the end user. You can say end user can't modify the settings in data wedge. Only it can be done through EMMs or state now. You can also disable importing of simulscan templates. You can control what intent APIs can be used by what apps. That's whitelisting of the apps and access to intent APIs. And within the intent APIs, what kind of intent APIs can be, uh, can be used by whitelisted apps, such as conf config, query, notification, runtime. So you get complete control over how Data Wedge imports a file, how did Data Wedge communicates with your apps, and which app it is, what kind of communication apps happens, all of that is configurable, controlled by the admins, and, uh, and in, during the runtime, you can't modify that. So that's the security option that we have built in. Uh, for more information, I provide a link here in Tech Talks. The next one is trigger wake up and scan. <clears throat> so the bottom line is, if your device is sleeping, suspended, you need to wake it up and then uh, start scanning only after you wake up. Uh, that is not always very efficient uh, for the productivity reasons. You should be able to press the trigger and it automatically wakes up. Not only does it wakes up the device, it starts scanning immediately as soon as it wakes up. That feature has been added and I have provided a link and how, uh, how to configure it. Also, it tells you how to enable this using intent APIs. The next one, this has been there for a while, but it is a very critical 
uh, feature. That's why I want to talk about it, multi-barcode. That means scanning multiple barcodes at the same time. When I say it's at the same time, you hold the trigger down and then you take the field of vision to one or more barcodes. And then if it sees more than one barcode, it decodes them all as long as you have enabled the symbology that it's looking at. So if you have anywhere two to 100 uh, barcodes in the field of view, it will decode them all at the same time. You could hold it steady and scan them all, or you could move the field of view to cover more and more. Uh, I, I, in that picture, I show an, uh, an example of one of our customers using that. They need to do this once every week for, uh, for policy reasons. And they just hold the device and then they start walking across and scans hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, and then what used to take a long time, now it's done in a few minutes. And the multi-barcode can be done in two ways. One is fixed quantity and the instant recording. Here in the bottom, I talk about fixed quantity. Quantities can be up to uh, anywhere from two to 100. And data is returned only after a specified number of barcodes hit, right? If you know ahead of time how many you want to be reading, you, you know that I have to read 100 until then I'm not going to stop. Otherwise, I have a problem here. Then you specify that quantity, and then DataWedge will attempt to read those number of barcodes if they are available in the field of view. So you may have to move the field of view to cover all of them. Barcodes can be different label types. You control what label types you accept. There is no guarantee of the order of return data. So just because your barcodes are arranged in certain way in the field of view, doesn't mean uh, the system reads it that way. Uh, there is a, a, a different algorithm that happens behind the scene. So it reads what it can when it's clear. So you can't really uh, guarantee the order. And also <clears throat> the good thing about fixed quantity is if you, if you happen to scan the same more than once because it's a duplicate, it gets discarded. Uh, the 50 quantity or 100 quantity that you define, it is unique. And the next one is instant reporting. Instant reporting is a little different from fixed quantity where you say, I don't know how many I want to scan. I just want to scan them all. Uh, so don't tell me, don't ask me to define a quantity. That's also a very good, uh, very frequently used use case. In this case, you just hold the device in the field of view, whatever the barcode comes in the field of view, it starts decoding. Now, it's not gonna wait for you to complete anything. As it decodes, if it sees two barcodes, it sends you two barcodes. If it sees five, it sends you five. And the, the only difference is if there are duplicates, if you scan it twice, it will send you those duplicates back and you will have to, um, in your application, sort out the, filter out the duplicates and different symbology can be used for instant reporting also. <clears throat> A quick demo on this one. So here is, okay. So there were more than 10 um, barcodes in the field of view. It was just that fast. One, the, the person who was using it just aimed at it. Within less than a second, it was all decoded and the, the, the data sent back to it. So that's very powerful, very efficient, very productive. The next one is signature capture. <clears throat> uh, this is where you get to define where the signature happens in your label and then and tell us what to, how big of uh, area you want to capture. And we capture that and send it back to you in the format that you uh, define. For example, it could be JPEG, it could be BM, PMP, or TIFF. Uh, you get to define in that label, uh, where do you want it? You, you want it um, uh, from the left to the right, um, the, the, the the rectangle that you want to capture. I'll show you a quick demo of this. Then you will you will know exactly how to use it. Uh, on the right on the right top right hand side, you will see the the label where the signature happens, 
you might be interested in capturing the address also, which can be done. And this is on the bottom, you see how to go uh, enable uh, signature capture as well as uh, uh, configure it. <clears throat> A quick demo. So in this, we are setting the um, pixels 100 by 400 uh, and scanning. And here is the label. So for 100 by 400, that's what I captured, right? And I'm going to modify the height. So I want a little bit more. <clears throat> more of the picture captured. And now I'm going to scan again. Now I see uh, the more enhanced picture popping up in your application. Uh, that's being used by um, uh, a number of companies uh, and customers for capturing the signature. <clears throat> and uh, the, here is a code uh, snippet on how to retrieve image, how to set the, uh, how to use intent APIs. I'm not gonna go through this one. Once again, this uh, code snippet is available in, um, <clears throat> in Tech Docs and uh, moving on. So now you know how to create a, a capture a signature um, it doesn't know if the signature has been put in there. Someone has put in their signature. It just captures that area. So now we added a new feature called signature presence where you can say, is there really a signature? If there is a signature, a detectable signature, the system detects it and comes back and not only gives you the picture, it says, I did see a signature. So that way, uh, this could be very helpful in terms of making sure the signature is captured. So the next one is uh, Swipe Assist or Data Capture Plus. Uh, this is, um, I don't want to use um, a trigger, hard trigger to trigger my scanner. I want a, uh, a soft trigger or a button on the screen to scan. And I don't want to do it myself because I already have my application written or I don't want to do it simply. Uh, for that reason, we provide this option where you can enable a button that Data Wedge puts on your screen on your app. Uh, for example, it's shown here is yellow, uh, a uh, small round um, button is there. You can move it around. You can change the size. Um, and uh, you can also make it entirely covered cover the entire screen. And when you press this button, the scanning happens as if someone pressed this trigger. So <clears throat> here are some examples, how to, uh, how to enable it and how to set it, how to change the size, and then you can cover the entire screen. You can swipe to close it. You can move it around uh, and, um, uh, uh, and also as well as uh, change the background color and transparency how transparent you want. The next uh, feature is decode screen notification. <clears throat> uh, based, uh, so in some devices, uh, it is not always easy to look at the screen and then uh, decide that if the scanning occurred and it could be a noisy environment. Uh, so um, we flash this, notification on the screen that takes the entire screen so that you don't really miss the fact that you did scan. So that feature uh, um, was made, about, made available a while ago. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very helpful in certain use cases where people really need that flash of a uh, notification to decide if the, the scanning occurred. Not only the scanning occurred, the the, the accurate scanning occurred. <clears throat> I'll quickly talk about the voice input. I did talk about start phrase in the voice input and then that is being deprecated. 
Um, there are some documentation, uh, actually good documentation available on voice input and how to enable it. Bottom line is um, you can scan, you can type in your data on the screen, or you can use voice input also to put the data into your application. And Data Wedge uses GMS, Android uh, voice recognition speech, uh, engine uh, to enable this. Um, so there are two mechanisms where GMS is offline and online. With online, the accuracy becomes better, um, but we provide support for both. And in the voice input, <clears throat> uh, I talked about start and how to um, um, uh, enable the voice input. And uh, so we are deprecating it. So you should use the PTT uh, trigger button to do that. And then in addition to uh, doing the voice input, you could send a tab, send an enter. Uh, it's not mentioned here, but you could also uh, move from one field to another. You can uh, add a command to say, this is not data, this is a command. I want to move, uh, move the cursor from one field to another, move next, move previous. You can even say move previous screen or exit. You can say enter send tab, those are the commands that are available that are not part of the data itself. So while you're collecting data, you could also control the screen and, and the workflow. And you do have a waiting tone feedback when it's ready to collect data. Uh, I talked about the offline speech recognition. And you could say, I am only interested in alphanumeric or numeric, in which case, if the expectation is only numeric data for that field on that screen, you can say, I won't accept alpha at all. It has to be numeric. So those features are built into voice input. Um, <clears throat> I, I am not gonna play the uh, demo app here, uh, because, uh, but I would suggest um, you guys download the, the demo app created that's available in GitHub and a link is provided here. Um, so please, uh, when you have time, take a look at this app. Uh, and uh, it uh, supports both scanning and voice input. It also uses keyboard output plugin to output data to your application. And, uh, uh, and it also shows you how to use numeric only quantity uh, input. And then it shows you how to use alphanumeric also. And you can use commands such as send enter in this app. Next, I'm moving to <clears throat> advanced data formatting or ADF. So, so far we talked about configuring data wedge, collecting data wedge uh, data from barcode scanner and passing the data to your application. Now we will talk about how to massage the data or process the data before the data is sent back to uh, your application. Some of the easier ones are, oh, I add a prefix and a postfix. Uh, that doesn't come under ADF, that comes under so-called BDF, that's basic data formatting, where you get to say what the prefix and postfix or send a tap, send enter can happen after the barcode is scanned. So when that happens, uh, the data wedge will send the data to your app and send an enter or send a tab or add a prefix at the end. So that can be done using BDF, but ADF is more powerful. It lets you set a criteria, a number of criteria before the data is back, passed back. Check for a string. If the string exists, only then do certain things. And check for a string at a certain position and check for a string length. It must be at least these many characters long. And the source criteria, is it coming from barcode input? Is it uh, code 128 only? Only then apply the ADF. Next is the actions. Once the criteria is met, you can choose not to use criteria at all. Uh, then the actions comes. So you can say, move the cursor by so many characters and send me only that data from that cursor. Move the cursor back, skip to start, move the cursor to a specific specified string is found. 
move the cursor past the specified string. And you can concatenate them all so that you can make it more like a, a script. So you can process the data however you want and then pick and choose the data that you're interested in. And in addition to that, you can say, send me a number of characters from that last criteria and send me remaining data, send me up to certain string and then pause for a few milliseconds before sending me this data, send me a specified string only and send me specified ASCII Unicode characters. So you can play with all of this and make it very powerful so that you don't have to change code in your application. More actions, crunch spaces, get rid of spaces, <clears throat> remove all leading zeros, pad with zeros, replace string with some other string if, if you find the string and remove characters from transformed string. So you can modify the string and then remove characters at the end. So this is, this is some examples of how to create the uh, rules, how to set the criteria and actions. Uh, there is uh, once again, good amount of uh, information available on TechDoc. <clears throat> so in this example, barcode that starts with 978 and 13 characters long are chosen and replace the first three characters with one, two, three. And that is the rule that we have created. Uh, that's the last slide. Um, um, I, we will take your question and answers now. If you have any questions, put, please put in your questions in the live, uh, live chat, chat message box there and I will take the questions. Thank you.